All right, problem 10. Problem 10, consider a thin spherical shell of radius 11 centimeters with a total charge of 29.5 evenly distributed on its surface. Find the electric field 10 centimeters from the center of the charge distribution. That's going to be zero. All right, so the concept here is Gauss's law. So we have a shell. Yeah, that shell's good enough. Now, no, I'm just going to get my pre-made shell. Pre-made computer-generated shell. Eh, it's okay. Ooh, thick line. Make it red. Yes, for extra emphasis. And we'll use blue for contrast. All right. So it is 11 centimeters, and we're looking at 10 centimeters. So this is going to be the center right here. Oop. So this is 11 centimeters, and we want to find out what the electric field is at 10 centimeters. So we're going to use Gauss's law. So we draw a sphere on the inside along the 10 centimeter border here. We have that flux equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught equals surface integral of electric field dot dA. Well, we're trying to find the electric field and there's definitely surface area associated with this um, uh, 10 centimeter uh, sphere. It'll be 4 pi 10 centimeters squared, 4 pi r squared, that's the surface area of the sphere. Um, and the constant, E naught, epsilon naught, epsilon naught, is also not zero. But Q enclosed is zero because all the charge is in the shell. Therefore, this guy will be zero, which implies that electric field also has to be zero to make these two true. Therefore, zero. No enclosed charge, no field even when you're measuring it in mega newtons and none all right so now they're going to ask us another question we're probably yep find the electric field at 25 centimeters from the center of the charge distribution okay so we're going to use the same concept i'm going to even use the same circle let's do a line there we go Oh, this will be 25. See if I can make this line bold. No, maybe I can't. Yeah. Don't care that much. Lost interest. All right, 25 centimeters, or as I'm going to say, 0.25 meters. Okay? So this time, though, we're going to have Q enclosed over epsilon naught equals double surface integral of the electric field times the surface uh, times a dot dA, small amount of surface area. So the electric field is going to be pointing outward radially. Actually, I should find outward. 29.5 uh, microcoulombs, which means it's positive. So this guy, 29 point five microcoulombs. Okay? And then we know the radius of this guy, r, is going to be 0 0.25 meters. So we're going to rearrange this as E times integral dA. So we know the surface area of the sphere at 25 centimeters will be 4 pi r squared, or 0.25 meters squared. So rearranging this, we will find that the electric field equals um, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q enclosed, which is 29.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, divided by 0.25 squared because that's the radius. And this right here we know is the same as K, 
which is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Right, that's where that goes, up there, kind of like that. All right, so now I'm going to Wolfram. 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times 29.5 times 10 to the negative 6th divided by 0.25 squared. All right, check that over real quick. 29.5, 0 0.25 squared, yep. 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times 29.5. I could have probably just rewritten that as 10 to the 3rd. Meh, that's okay. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 4.24 times 10 to the 6th. Four point two four times ten to the sixth, which is the same as four point two mega newtons uh, per coulomb, newtons per coulomb, which is the unit for electric field. Ah, that is a good circle. All right, four point two four, and the direction will be outward. All right, to backtrack slightly, to talk about conceptually why the first part is true and why it's zero, when we look at the, so we, mm -hmm. I want to erase everything except the circle. There we go. I guess I could have just taken the circle away and moved it. All right, so the idea here, down just a little bit, is we have the center and we have a small test particle or whatever at this 10 centimeters and we want to find the electric field on it. Well, the electric field is going to be, let's do it this way, influenced by the shell. So if we look at all these parts like over here, so we have a little segment over here this segment, let's say it's positive, let's say this guy is positive, so it's going to push the particle this way. And it's going to be really close, so it's going to have a big impact, but it's going to have a small surface area because it's not that big of a segment. Well, this entire segment over here, which is really big, so it's going to have a lot of influence, but it's really far away, it's going to push the particle this direction. And what it turns out is you can then do that for every part of the circle, and everything's going to cancel out. So even though there are electric fields at that point, all the electric fields cancel out. So it's probably not true to say that um, there's no electric fields inside of this sphere, uh, because there are electric fields. They just all cancel each other out. So the net electric field is zero. And that's why they say when there's no Q enclosed, there's going to be no uh, electric field. Hence Gauss's law. So that's not a very rigorous mathematical proof, but intuitively it makes sense. So when you start questioning yourself, draw a diagram like this, convince yourself, and then answer the questions correctly. All right, that is number 10. Number 10. All right, so on to number 11.